Everyone get one last look at the Mark V Supra manual because after today, it is no longer gonna be a street car and we're never gonna see these two in this driveway ever again. Having that third pedal is weird, man. So strange in this car. If you didn't see the last video where we took delivery of this car, I absolutely love this gearbox. I was a little bit concerned. I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it, but after a quick five minute test drive, the thing feels super good. It's notchy. It doesn't feel like it was thrown together last minute. It looks like this was a well executed plan from Toyota. And I am super stoked with this purchase and cannot wait to get started with this thing. Before we get into this car today, I know Dylan is gonna want check it out so I want to show him because he's just as excited about this car as I am. Is the hood different? No, it's all the same. Maybe I just don't look at these enough. This thing's fucking hot. So for those who do not know, this Supra is going to be turned into our brand new competition drift build. The 370 is a car that I've been driving the past year or so in competitions, grassroots events. And then I also have a bigger car known as my 350, Selena with the 2JZ sequential gearbox. And if you want to know the reasoning for why we're really picking the A90 Supra as our new drift build, you can go to the Clips channel and you can see a full 35 minute debate discussion about why we chose the Supra. The main reason why I purchased this Supra is because because it now comes in a manual transmission. I really love this platform and I love the B58. It can make a good amount of power on pretty much stock supporting mods. And the one thing missing to make this car just the perfect grassroots drift car or competition car is a manual trans. Now there are people who have swapped manual gearboxes in this car, but they never really worked 100%. And when I saw that the Supra is now offered a manual, I knew I wanted to try to get a hold of that as our new platform. I've really enjoyed a stock driveline in the 370Z and a lot of others have too. That's the biggest reason that's why you see so many C6 Corvette builds is because you're able to utilize the stock LS with some bolt-on mods and use the stock transmission and you have a very reliable car. I believe, and so does Dylan, and there are some others, I don't wanna expose anyone in case they do this later this year. We think that the Supra can be a new platform that will work very well in the drift world. We think that the gearbox is solid, it's a GS6, we know that they can hold a good amount of power based on the platforms that are out there. We know that the B58 is great. The only thing stopping this car from really proving itself as a really good stock driveline drift car is an idiot who is willing to spend brand new money on a car to just drift it. And that was me. We think this is gonna be a great platform this year. This is going to be our good life car. This is gonna be our competition car. This is gonna be our demo car. All the events where I would ship a car back and forth, that will be this car. We were looking at getting a BMW M2 competition, which a lot of you seem to have interest in. Those are two very similar platforms as far as motor setup. The motors are different, but they are similar. And with the manual transmissions. A lot of you guys were in support of us going with the M2 competition, but when it came down to it, I really wanted to do the Mark V Supra. One, just for the street hunter aspect of it. I think it's gonna be really awesome. But two, I just really favor this car and I believe that this will be a very popular car in the future once the prices come down and I'm willing to take that chance, kind of help pave the way of making this to the next bolt-on drift car. You did it, you didn't need me. I'm here for it, but you didn't need me. You, you are you are a big supporter in this too. I still am and always will be. I, I love this car. I think the drivetrains that we all chose or you and I chose were really similar. And again, if you don't know what we're talking about, go to the Clips channel. We had a full debate about this. Clips channel. We were doing C C6 Corvette, M2 Competition, 370, 370Z, 400Z, Mark V Supra. M240. And we could have just done a whole new like pro car build with like a dog box and a winter's quick change and ultimately decided that's not what we wanted to do. But hopefully the factory reliability of a factory drivetrain with some modifications here and there and bolt-ons. Bolt-ons, bolt-ons, bolt-ons. Everything that we can have spares of or that we don't have to custom fabricate, anything like that's perfect. And there are a few unknowns here, take the keys. There are a few unknowns that are, again, a little bit of a risk. The fact that we don't know how easy it's gonna be to get spare parts for this. You know, bumpers and stuff like that are a little bit more accessible now because the car's been out for two or three years but this manual transmission now it's a similar transmission as in like other bmws running this gs6 transmission i'm actually going to probably try to call bmw today it might be and see if i can just order a spare now and if it takes months it takes months and at least we'll be able to have a little bit of lead time there dude the gearbox is sick so before we literally put this up on the lift and it doesn't leave until it hits the track the next time um today we're going to be fully making this thing inoperable it will never be on the street again <laughs> i'm not registering this car i literally bought it just to make it into our drift car and i'm so excited about it i'm more excited about doing this build than a lot of other builds this year. Dude, this is a new car. Yeah. It's a brand new car. What is the mileage on it? I think it's like 80 miles It's right now. 84 miles. This is a brand ass new and that's car. that's just driving it home and, tomorrow, and driving it back. Tomorrow it's not going to look like it has fenders. 
I can't wait. Dylan's obviously a big part of the team this year and he's gonna be um, essentially our crew chief. He's gonna be our crew chief this year with drifting and he's gonna have a huge part in it. And I want him to drive this car stock just to see what he thinks about it because this is gonna be our new build. And we're gonna be getting really familiar with this car throughout this year. And hopefully, if any of you guys are dumb enough to be interested in making an A90 drift car, we can help kind of show you guys what works and what doesn't work. Because you still can get the manual swap. People do it, they just have had a lot of problems. And we really considered it. I'd rather just know it works off the rip. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Let's wait till there's no oncoming traffic. Uh -huh. And I want you to slow down to like five miles per hour, like right now. Oh, that's an SF90. Damn. Uh, slow down to first gear. I don't even know what that is. It's a new Ferrari. Oh, I think it looked cool. Um, what? And it just rev yeah, maps. It rev maps. Dump, dump the clutch and give us a little. Oh, that's a pilot sports too. I know. This thing feels good. Yeah. That's a quick car. It's pretty quick. So this makes 380, the new ones do, 380 horsepower, which is pretty decent. It's nothing crazy, but you can tune this car on 91. Um, <laughs> with, yeah, the rev match Sorry. is a little, the rev match is weird. But you can tune this thing with 91 to make like literally 500 horsepower, which is absolutely nutty to me. We grabbed second gear. <laughs> it's super um, snappy. It's very snappy. Like the throttle feels late. So you so you go to put you it. You have in. to anticipate throttle like before the steering input. Yeah. What I, I, felt. I was like I was like oh it starts to straighten. I gotta put more in and then it goes snap. Yeah, but it's also stock angle. Yeah. But and I, but True. once we chuck Y fab on it, I, f I feel it should it should go right back to feeling just like a 370 or a 350. <laughs> it felt good. Before this car turns into our drift car and before we actually start cutting this thing up and start the journey of modifying this to be the ultimate car for the year, super excited about that. Uh, it's dirty. Let's give this thing a wash. We're gonna be using Meguiar's today to get, whoa, that's a, I walked by that thumb and I was expecting to get shot at. Meguiar's, baby. Detailer. We're gonna use this, get this thing washed up, and we'll put it on the rack. Oh, oh, okay, all right. Okay, just flip, yep, yep, okay, yep. Oh, your middies are gonna be very cool. It's good, boys. Sorry. Yeah. I think it's good. We finally just got the 370Z started. This car does not drive nearly as much as it used to. Well, it's kind of the off season. It took like all of us to find a spare jump pad to get this thing started. And the battery was trying and trying. And it started. Sounds good though. I just heard it start. I just thought to myself, oh man, that's my girl. Like this car has made me such a better driver and it's not going anywhere. I'm not selling it, I'm keeping it. There still will be times when we get to use it, but we're getting this out now, and we're getting ready to rack the Mark V. When that Mark V is racked, it is the start. It is the big start. Oh, I'm just, I'm so excited. Just imagine we have that amount of angle on that. Oh, so cool. Supra, veil side, pulled out next to each other. Just had to take a moment and I had to appreciate it. The other day we had the 65 out, with the veil side. It was a cool experience, but we're gonna go ahead and pull the Mark V in and uh, a special delivery just showed up. While we are waiting patiently from all of our parts that we ordered from our part supplier of the year, Throttle, super stoked on that. Put in a massively large order with Throttle. Everything from suspension to tuning to angle kit to exhaust stuff. So many parts are on the way. And while we're waiting for all those parts to come in, we have a Street Hunter drop off today with a brand new wide body kit for the Supra, but this one is special. This one is made of complete carbon fiber. Woo! Overnight Delivery. parts from LA. Delivery. Big day. I'm excited <laughs> for this. So I haven't even seen any of this. I'll give you guys a little bit of a backstory of like how long we've been working on this, but this is my first time seeing these carbon fiber parts in person, so I'm really excited for it. Oh my gosh. So, we have a blanket over it, but. Oh God. Every single part, oh. full of carbon, front and back. And it actually looks pretty good too. Wow. Now every part is different, and that cracking's okay. Wow. Okay, we're gonna start putting all this stuff inside. Oh, the cracking is fine, that's just. Yeah, we just break it in. I'm never one to say that carbon should be left like exposed on the car if the rest of the car isn't carbon. But this is maybe the one time where it's gonna blend super well that we might just be it's a little a bit inclined to keep it like this. It's almost a shame if we did anything else. It looks so good. Wow. Wow. 
that's sick. So why I'm really excited about this is because this is going to be a race car with having aftermarket fenders and wide body flares and all that type of stuff. When we hit a wall and we get in accidents, fiberglass tends to explode in a million pieces and just shatters. There's a lot of other companies out there who will do carbon Kevlar and there are also some others that do carbon. And this is obviously much more durable than fiberglass and you can see it's very, very bendy. So in the event that you hit anything or it bumps rather than just exploding like fiberglass do, the idea is that this will be able to withstand a little bit more uh, punishment and we'll go through less of them. And this is a complete piece of carbon. It's not fiberglass with carbon on top. This is a full true piece of carbon. Now we actually did some testing with this. Now I'll have Dylan talk about this. As you guys know, Chris Forsberg is running a straight hunter kit on his Z. And what we didn't really showcase too much online is Chris was running a fiberglass version. He was like, hey, do you think you can make this in fiberglass to minimize the amount of pieces that I go through. I went to Dylan about it. Those who don't know, Dylan is my partner in Street Hunter and has way more knowledge when it comes to molds and the actual like fit and finish and design of things. But we did it for Chris. Here's some footage of it. These pieces that we made for Chris had so much flex in them, mainly because they were just such big pieces comparative to all the super pieces that are a little bit smaller. So still a good amount of flex, but not nearly as much as Chris's. Yeah, so one of the really cool parts about um, some of these pieces compared to what we would normally be producing for our regular customers is the fact that, as TJ said, no fiberglass whatsoever. And also, the weave on this is actually super pretty. And what we mean by that is when you are wrapping carbon and, and when you're putting carbon on parts to keep the weave intact and to use one whole piece, it's hard to keep the weave to be straight and like uniform. When we're making these race versions of the kit, having it look pretty is not what we're going for. It looks pretty entirely, but it's not the prettiest weave comparative to like, you know, a kit that you'll order from us that is for a street car. That is like, we're trying to make it look as pretty as possible. And I know there's gonna be a bunch of emails now on Street Hunter being like, can I please order this for my car? We usually keep everything in stock. We try to always make sure that whether you're ordering a lip or a, or a wing or a hood, that we shelve inventory so you don't have to wait for shipping. And I hate when you have to order a wide body kit and you just wait forever for it. That's, that sucks. Uh, this is not something that we're really offering yet. If you email it, us If though, you email us and you're like, hey, I'd like to order a complete carbon kit, whether it's a show car or a street car or a race car, I would say for the 400 and for the Supra, we're offering it, but you have to special order it. It's like a made to order. But the turnaround time, this only took like two weeks. We got it, we got it done really quick. I mean, TJ's obviously a special exception here, but honestly, we, we cranked this out in maybe a week and a half, two weeks, and um, for the finish that we got on it, I'm, yeah, like I said, I'm super Look proud at of this it. piece. This is a, this is a huge piece of carbon. All, all one piece, and you also notice that there's not like seam lines running all around the part and stuff like that, which is, you know, on a lot of race car stuff, you obviously don't really care about where the seam line and the mold is and stuff like that, but just to kind of see how clean, yeah, the entire weave of the parts came out, I'm, I'm really happy. tend to paint or wrap this car, but for the time being, since the paint is brand new, really nice, nice to put blue tape, painter's tape, so you can make all your markings and cut and move and adjust the panels and it doesn't scratch the paint. We don't have more than one roll, so we're kind of figuring out where to put it. We're gonna put one line and then just go one or two above and below, which is not ideal, but for now it'll work. And then we're gonna take this nice, beautiful body shop wrap or whatever and cover probably, you know, headlight, anything that we're gonna rub on, touch, accidentally fuck up, and then uh, that should protect the paint for the time being. Feeling TJ real quick. 
while he electrocutes himself. I'm gonna go ahead and disremove the batter. Disremove. I'm gonna take out the battery. We literally originally are put. Take it from here. Originally, we were going to actually take it from here. <laughs> <laughs> Leave that all in. I'm changing. Leave it. I'm changing all what I'm saying. This is a 2023 Supra. Jeez. It is different than the Supra that we have sitting right here. This is a 2020, it's an A90, this is an A91. Apparently the ECUs on the new Supras are locked and you can't tune them on an open software like you can with those ECUs. So originally what we were gonna do is just get like a JB4, which is like a piggyback tune and the JB4 allows you to pretty much just like increase the boost and stuff like that. It's a generalized piggyback. There's a couple different options. I talked to our boy Jordan from RK Tunes, which is like the BMW tuning man, shout out to Jordan. And he was just like, dude, honestly, if I were you, I would just have your stock ECU unlocked. That way you can tune it like the older ones. So we're gonna step away from the JB4 idea and I'm gonna go ahead, disconnect the battery and take out the ECU and we're gonna get it tuned. So it literally gets like shipped off to another country and they unlock it and ship it back and it pretty much just makes it as accessible as the A90 ECU. Something we didn't have to do with the older ones, with the newer ones, and the way that Toyota and all these OEs are trying to crack down on tuning, one of the obstacles we have to do. So I'm gonna take out the battery and we are gonna get this ECU out. Dylan is now taping up the other side of the car and we're gonna cut that and then- With for sure our tape that we bought. We stole it from Throttle's garage. Do we need to get in the first place? Oh, oh burritos. Wait, Damn, wait, wait, that was heavy. I told him in his sleep, I whispered it while he was sleeping so he woke up just, with the- Yeah! The, the yeah! This Woo! Is, what, a, what a good day. Yeah. It's gonna be All right, a good if you haven't day. already given this video a like, <laughs> be sure to give it a big like down below. I like Still Still in your thumb. Dude. Just don't- Pay attention to this that's happening right now. <laughs> what? I can't even hear it. What so are now you- Now we can do anything we want to him. What? <laughs> oh! oh. Damn, you got a strong neck, mm. boy. I'm Calvin and I approve this message. I'm Calvin and I approve this message. I want to talk highly of my boy. Look at look at this cut. This is a fantastic cut. I've done a couple and I've hurt myself. I've had a thing explode in my face. And over there, it looks well radius. This is so much better than what I did before. Look, look at him. Duke, I appreciate it. Calvin protective wrapped this side uh, and then did some of the hood. I took it off, I'm gonna tape this and then I clean this because uh, I'm also gonna protective wrap this in the windshield. Calvin? What, what you do? Oh! <laughs> That's satisfying. Yesterday was a lot more of a fight, but you called it. That was a good one. Oh no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, we'll save it for a while. Ooh, that fits. It's just beautiful. It's such like a positive fit. It really makes the front bumper just fill out like a lot. I'm back. We're I'm good. back. I've been gone. I don't know how long I've been gone on the episode, but I'm back. We're four episodes deep. Where have you been? We <laughs> tested the car already. Dude, you've already drifted it? Yeah. Was it good? I loved it. That's what I like to hear. All right, episode six, tune in. <laughs> This lip looks good. Oh, There's bro. gonna be a Street Hunter logo right there. It says Sheesh <laughs> Hunter. I saw a lot of comments. They're like, this car better get painted BRG green with a big gold livery down the side of it. It's not. I hate to break it to you. It's not. But the livery we have coming, I'm telling you, is sick. Dylan can back me up. It's gonna be super. Yeah. No, it's tight though. I'm really excited about it. It was like your idea, half of it. <laughs> it's gonna be sick as. <laughs> it's gonna be tight, cause I did it, me. I, I showed it to you. I'm, I'm saying too much. Whoa. You'll see it soon. He just disrespected him like uh, that. Dude, I took some lineage, some history, and I was like, let me just like make this work for what hey, we're doing. Dylan does livery designs as a side job. If any of you want to get a livery designed by Dylan? <laughs> bitch, dude. Dylan's, <laughs> cut this out. Right Dylan's now. mobile livery design. Big side hustle for him. He's. 
does a lot. So yeah, Kevin will do the. Lot? Kevin wait, does the banners. Wait, wait, Dylan does, does the design. Dylan, I mean, Dylan will do the install, but Dylan will design it. He actually does literary design. I can't, I can't wait to cry myself to sleep. He's one of those dudes <laughs> who gets like those crazy like pink and chromes and yellows and. He did Grant's car. Super. Did you really? No. I yeah, told him. I told him. You designed that livery, didn't you? I yes. had some. I had some. Did design yes. that livery. Yeah. Like yeah I did. Red and pink. Bold move, but okay. I'm gonna get a phone call. From <laughs> like 11:30. What the heck, TJ? You don't think the red and pink looks good? 100. percent Grant's gonna be like, I guys, I did that. Dude, Grant's a YouTuber now, so Dude. put some respect on the check. I know. I can't even text him anymore. He doesn't. doesn't YouTubers don't get back to you. If you text and call them, oh. if you have a YouTube channel, they just True. don't respond to you. Stupid YouTubers, oh, dude. Dumbass. Yeah. Disrespectful. Idiots. Did Shut you know there's on. no fast food chains that start with W? What a burger. What a burger. Okay, besides. Get yeah, absolutely sh Dude, Wendy's? 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 my mouth! No! Hey, sorry. You're okay? <laughs> I don't miss. Oh, look at me. I can't even see. I want to bump him so bad. God, I want to bump him. Woo! I'm going to stare at the camera and do this. Ready? Yep. This is a bad idea. Oh, missing. I don't know where I am. Oh, Calvin's been down that hole before. Okay, we're, we're, we're aborting mission. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I didn't know where the hole was. I told Dylan that this was like the best cut I've ever seen. He's impressed with how nice it fits. You tell him mom is better though, right? TJ, you cut as if you were blind. I'm good. I'm really good. You're blind. <laughs> Yeah, is I that what we you were, wanted from me? I thought we were just test fitting it. Is anyway. that what you wanted no, from me? No, we're putting it back. I, know. <laughs> oh, I, I caught him, dude. I got him. Is that what you wanted? <laughs> dude, you can't put that in, dude. That's bad. When you stop, I need to put the hardware in before you pull on it. Sorry. That's everyone else. Anyone else? That's. That's. Thank sick. you. Oh my. <laughs> I mean, I can close it. Want me to close yeah, it? Yeah, close it. Yeah, I think. I think coming back to meet this eyelet right there is perfect. Like, I don't see a problem with that. So, if we're happy with that. I am, I am pleased with that. Okay, then I'm just going to hold this right here and push it in so it's nice and tight. And then let's do, if we don't have to flex it up here at all, let's just do that one and then go up. I know, I know. Oh, do I remember that last time? It, dude. I went right into the headlight last time I did that. Because it impacts the wheel. Oh, that scared me, but yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to slam it that hard. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's gross. <laughs> oh, Ooh. that looks so good. Oh, my God. Whoa, the homies. Teamwork makes the dream. The homie work. Damn, thumb, where'd you find that? Where'd you find that, oh. son? Don't get okay. hard, don't get hard, don't get hard. Old grandmas, old grandmas, or oh, getting hard. <laughs> what like that one? What the Dude. You like that meme? <laughs> I don't know if it was a meme or real life. I love it. I think the, the smoked edges and the carbon works. I can't wait to take the blue off. I'm hyped. It looks fucking awesome. What do you think? It's been like three years since we've done one of these, and it's just kind of crazy to think how far not just the company and the products and stuff like that came, but even like the whole install process and just kind of seeing all of it come together to do it again. I'm You're super excited. stoked, honestly. And the carbon yeah. looks way better than I thought it was going to be. Originally, I was like, I'm not always the biggest fan of like all exposed carbon and stuff like that. And for us doing a full carbon kit, we didn't really know if it was going to match up or blend really well. But honestly, it turned out great. You know, the weaves lining up and hopefully once we get all the wheels on it and stuff like that, it's just going to look perfect. Yeah, this was one of the reasons why we didn't want to do the M2 was because I more than anything really wanted to run this kit on a car that we're gonna be I don't know just never thought we'd get to this point and the fact that we're here we're like whoa and kind of what Dylan said we haven't done this in three years and it's cool to like come back and do it again but now with the full carbon kit all prep aside we just yammed the whole side like an hour we did and before like we were working for SEMA and we still did it within like 
36 hours this or you know something like crazy three like YouTube that. videos to yeah, do yeah. this <laughs> like, just trying to get the kid on it felt like you know it, it's crazy too I think all of our our own experience now doing this we installed the whole thing by like eyeball and, and feel like feeling body lines feeling fender lines it wasn't like a we should measure here and hold this here it was just hold flex feel and we're like does that look and feel good to you and he's like yep 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 so back and forth cool great it's so cool with this with this little duck bill. It is. <laughs> Again, we said this in the beginning of the video. This is just a placeholder till the wing gets here. But the duck bill, any super owners, the high kick duck bill that we have is sick. Can look at this three quarter. Or even the side, yeah, right with the with the duck here. Oh, like yeah. that looks fucking good. <laughs> Coolest car on the planet. Yeah, every word that I say, but I'm excited. Oh, it dude, looks look, so. Look hard. at the hips right here, dude. <laughs> wow. What the flip, beef, or whatever. Wow. Damn, that looks yeah, so good. it looks really good. Wait, okay, go stand over there. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Oh! Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh. I can't see. Is it cool? oh yeah, I'll do it for you. Damn, dude, the white. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, one hundred percent. We're not gonna run dude. thirty-sevens for our wheels. I'll tell you guys that much. But we do have a really cool wheel that I'm really excited to be running. The, the wheels are probably still like three weeks out, but we have something really cool. It's gonna be spicy. It's gonna be hot. One of the biggest things we wanted to do with this car was to have it be like super aggressive and just look mean. Like we wanted it to elevate the car and we're not gonna skimp out and uh, we're gonna make this thing look dialed in all corners. This whole bumper is gonna be one piece. So we're gonna kind of make it a little more sturdy, kind of work on these body gaps a little bit. So I think I'm gonna hold it up with my knee and then flush this up over here. And then I can always sand some of this down. So I made these little brackets super quick on the bandsaw and a little flap disc. Boom. And then we'll just plop also, right there. Also, Put some holes. Oh, I felt like trying to remove a screw. Like, we're not going to have some 90 bit at the track. I mean, yeah, that probably. makes sense. It's so, this accessible. way we can just either self tap it, rivet it, drill it out, whatever, but it's super accessible. Cool. And then we don't have to go, like, oh my God, I need to hold on when I. Because uh, ease of use and accessibility is really important at the track. Dylan the fabricator, Better blank abater. Oh, I'm not. Oh. Dylan and I just finished the bracket on the right side. I was just saying to Dylan, I want to say to you guys, I'm really, really impressed because of how perfect this wheel arch is for a mold for fiberglass that was a like one-off test trial, how well it worked. And one thing that I'm super stoked about, I remember when we were actually designing this kit, I was like, I really wanna make sure the wheel arches are large enough for you know the potential of making it suitable for a drift car with big angle. And this has huge wheel arches. And I remember with all my Rocket Bunny setups and stuff, you have to trim so much to make room and we're gonna have tons of room. And this thing, I'm seeing it, I'm seeing the vision and it's, Oh, dude, I, I'm tired of having a foot cut out of the front bumper because of caster yeah. on drift cars. Yeah. So if you can have we, a body kit that a works, yeah. that just works. The only thing we have to trim is like this. That's that's super standard. But like, like all the aesthetic is right here. Yeah. All the aesthetics right here. I don't care about inwards. That looks cool. These old brackets are uh, simple. They'll get the job done. We'll probably be able to make like spares if we need it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start mounting the right side, or sorry, the left side of the car with the side skirt. And then we're gonna go ahead and make brackets, support brackets like for the front bumper. And we need to make it for the underside of the front fender and side skirt because that's where this kit needs a little bit of support is making those two connection points married underneath the car. So we're gonna go ahead, mount this, and we're gonna move on to making our brackets. So you guys know we're not gonna do you dirty and this video is gonna show everything start to finish. Typically, I would make this like a couple different videos. I was like, nah, I can't do my boys like that. We're gonna have this be a super long video and just include everything. So we'd finished up mounting up the whole entire left side of the car. So we'll have a few brackets to make, but we really wanna put wheels on the manual Supra and get a photo. So I drove my other Mark V Supra and we're backing it in. So cool to see these things next to each other. Holy moly. This one's super dirty. Like it's been sitting outside and it's been raining. I thought I had like a cool sand wash from Toyota. Oh yeah, no, yeah, that's all, that's all supposed to be like that. So how cool is this, dude? Wow, <laughs> that's cool. This is the first time I've seen them both together. So I just kind of want to document that because wow, this is really cool. See it now, Drift Comp, final battle. TJ Hunt versus someone else that's gonna lose. One more time, Dylan throwing on a fresh set of tires, running on the car, ba, 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 ba. TJ goes, drags ass on the wall. <laughs> just, and then we win.
I can see it now, baby. <laughs> Pulling out the car, kid is mounted. We just wanted to see this thing. We just want to see how it looks. We threw on my wheels from my other Street Hunter Supra. So the fitment's there, but we're still on stock like suspension stuff. So the ride height is garbage, but it still looks cool. So we're gonna take it outside and look at it in white. All right, you guys, well that is gonna do it for today's video. We are shutting it down and we hit our completion goal of installing this kit. Now we have probably a month's worth of work to do on this car, from running our inline hydro, to getting our angle set up, to getting our tune, to setting off the ECU, to getting that unlocked. There's so much to do and we're gonna hit, the, we're, we are trying to hit the ground running. So we're gonna end the video here and we're gonna continue. We're already taking off the kit to get ready for our next set of installs we're gonna be doing. But I will see you guys in the next video. I wanna give a big shout out to everyone in the comment section below. Uh, there's been so many of you guys that have been giving some suggestions and telling us more about this car. Cause as I kind of said, when we picked it up, I was like, I think it's this transmission, but I don't know the variants. And there's been a lot of you guys just chiming in down below and giving us information. And this is a BMW and I don't know too much about the BMW platform. As you guys know, I'm a huge new fan. So I just wanna say thank you. We appreciate it. Dylan and I and Calvin literally read all of the comments. Whenever you guys give bits of information, we always love it and we really try to use as much of it as we can. If any of you guys are interested in any of the pieces that we're taking off, like interiors and the seats and the under panels, we're gonna be selling all of these parts. So if you have an A90 and you're looking for some stuff, we have a crash one and, and you are rebuilding, stay posted to my Instagram because we're gonna be posting all this stuff for sale. I saw a lot of comments about that. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out and keep moving forward.